Hey friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, hello. My name is Kay, I'm a professional home organizer and soprano here in the Boston area. And I usually make home organizing, decorating, edutainment style videos here on this YouTube channel. If that is your bag, uh, subscribe. Um, and if you are here for organizing content, and you don't want to hear about YouTube copyright and copyright law, you have my permission to skip this video. It's totally fine. I will see you next time. However, if you want to hear what I've gone through this month and how I stopped a company from stealing from me, then stay tuned. So before we get started, I am not a lawyer. I have done a fair amount of fact checking as this video is concerned, but I am not a lawyer. So please do not take this video as advice from a lawyer, legal advice, please seek legal counsel if you need legal advice. Um, however, this is done with my understanding of copyright law. So I think a lot of you are aware that last month I uploaded a video onto my channel that talked about an experience I had learning a piece of music really quickly for a gig. So a little of that performance was captured on video and I subsequently uh, uploaded a little bit of that performance onto my YouTube channel and I talked about my experience about learning a piece really quickly because I thought it was a good thing to talk about. Um, fun fact, that video actually underperformed and I actually lost nine subscribers when I uploaded that video, so you guys loved it. <laughs> However, the piece that I performed in the video was by a composer called Claudio Monteverdi, he died in 1643. He wrote Baroque music. And the piece was called Laudate Dominum and it was performed live by me and an organist. On October 11th, after that video had been up for maybe 24 hours or so, I got an email in my inbox saying that EMI and Ultra Music Publishing had claimed some content in my video. Now I was like, what copyrighted content is in my video? And it turns out that they claimed that my performance of Laudate Dominum was a cover of a song that they owned the copyright to, which was weird. So basic information about how copyright law works. The copyright system was invented in the 1700s, uh, 1710 for England and 1790 for the United States. Currently under current copyright law and policies, anything before 1925, is uh, pretty much public domain. Like let's say works of Shakespeare, uh, Mary Shelley, you can read that on your YouTube channel because it's in the public domain. You can you know, act out Shakespeare plays. You don't have to pay a licensing fee because those pieces are in the public domain. And the same thing applies to works of Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, and yes, Claudio Monteverdi, who died in 1643 before copyright was even invented. If something was never covered by copyright law in the first place, it is in the public domain. So you're free to use and perform works in the public domain without licensing fees or fear of getting a copyright strike or a copyright thing from somebody. So when I got this copyright claim in my email, I was like, oh, I'll just dispute it because I've gotten several dubious or false copyright claims on my YouTube channel, like dozens, and I always dispute them Dispute is the first step you can do and they always get released 100% of the time. I have never ever lost a copyright dispute in my entire history of YouTube. So I was like, oh, I'll just dispute it because I'm, I assumed that a bot came by and heard my performance and said, oh, we have a sound recording of that because sound recordings of pieces in the public domain, like let's say I record Handel's Messiah, right? I get a group of people together, orchestra, chorus, we record Handel's Messiah, we put it out there on CD Baby, that's under copyright. Even though the piece of work, Handel's Messiah, is a public domain, as soon as I record it, put a label on it, sell it out there, put it out there, that's my copyrighted recording. So I just assumed that it was like some bot came by and was like, oh, that piece sounds like a sound recording that we made, so let's take the money. And it was funny because sometimes when you get a copyright claim, the claimant can do several things. They can take down your video or request to take down your video if they want to do that, if they feel like you know they don't want your video on YouTube at all. Um, they can take all of the revenue that you earned from that particular video, which is bizarre to me, or this is what they did, this is what EMI and Ultra Publishing did, they can share the revenue with me. 
However, they do not own the right to pieces in the public domain. So I was ready to fight. I'm always ready to fight. So on that same day, October 11th, I just, I, I put in my dispute on in YouTube's system. And I just want to add that YouTube does not get involved in these copyright disputes. They have washed their hands of this entire thing. They themselves have signed into agreement with these music producing companies to share the revenue with, of AdSense with them. So if given the choice, a music producer, a music a record company is going to take money from the creator instead of like take down the video. They'd much rather make money than to block the content. So um, I, I do the dispute. So their, dis their reply to my dispute came back minutes later, which was very surprising. And it said, after reviewing your dispute, Ultra Publishing has decided that their copyright claim is still valid. But you don't own the copyright to Monty Verity because nobody does. So this is where most creators will stop fighting with the big companies, stop fighting with Sony, stop fighting with EMI, stop fighting with UMG, because what happens next is you can appeal the rejected dispute. Now, when you appeal the rejected dispute, the claimant who, by the way, has total control over this process, you have no control over this process, and no, there's no mediator who is in, who can actually help you in this process, um, the claimant has 30 days to do one of several things. In the 30 days, they can drop their copyright claim, which means you get your money back from that you earn from the video. They can file a DMCA takedown request in which you have seven days, I think, to cancel your appeal. Then they'll keep their copyright claim on your video and they'll keep stealing from you. They can require, they can do a DMCA takedown of your video in which your video immediately gets taken down and you get a copyright strike on your channel, which nobody wants because if you get three of them, your YouTube account gets terminated. Nobody wants that. Or number four, they can just let the claim time out and do nothing. And that's what I was banking on. I had enough faith in my case that they were not going to pursue any kind of DMCA takedown of my video. So I was going to go ahead and take the risk of filing an appeal. But most people also stop at filing an appeal because when you file an appeal with a, uh, with a, um, with a copyright claim, you have to give all of your personal information to the claimant, your full ne legal name, your address, your email address, etc. So this is a, the reason why a lot of people stop. And keep in mind, I don't get any information about the claimant. I don't have any email address where I can contact them. I don't have their physical address. The claimant gets my information, but I don't get theirs. Interesting. So this is what stops most creators on YouTube from pressing that appeal button. Because when you press that appeal button, you enter into a risky situation. You can either get your YouTube channel copyright stricken in which you, again, you get three of those, your YouTube channel gets terminated and you can stop the first one. I think you like, you can stop live stream. You can't live stream for a while, which is ridiculous. Most people are afraid, are afraid and, and they're being strong armed by these big companies. Now I went ahead and filed the, the appeal because I knew that they didn't have time for me. I am the smallest fish in the ocean and they would have gotten what? $10 at that point from me. The video at the time had been up for two days and earned a grand total of $30 almost. So they were coming for my $30. They were gonna split between them, by the way. So they were each gonna earn what, like, uh, I don't know, $5? I don't know. So it was some real, it was like pennies, but I, I appealed on principle because I believe that this is happening on a larger scale than most people talk about. We're not even talking about fair use at this point. We're talking about works in the public domain and big music producing companies stealing from creators and artists. I heard that in 2020, when the pandemic shut down the world, performers were taking to Facebook, they were taking to YouTube, they were taking to Instagram to get together, perform, live stream it. Facebook was shutting people down who were performing like 
like Mozart quintets and Beethoven uh, string quartets because big companies like EMI, uh, Noxus was one of the most notorious ones, was claiming that they were infringing on copyright for their sound recordings. Now, I understand that these bots that come by and flag these recordings, it's, it's not a perfect system right? It's just not perfect. They're going to come by and ding something that sounds vaguely like their sound recording. However, when I filed my dispute and I got a response minutes later that said their dispute was still valid, that's where I think the crime really started because either they have some automatic machinery rejecting disputes or they have hired some uninformed person, an intern, like somebody who has no idea what they're doing legally um, to just reject all the uh, like disputes they get in from their YouTube channel because they wanna earn all the money they can. And in this case, they were genuinely stealing. This wasn't, again, these are, this was not copyrighted material. This was music in the public domain that I, anyone is free to perform without a license fee from anyone. So I, on principle, waited 30 days for them to respond to my appeal and to my not surprise, they just let it time out. So in the end, uh, I did end up, I guess, winning this entire copyright dispute. Um, and I, I actually don't know. And what happens when you file the dispute in the first place is the money that you earn from your ad revenue or whatever gets put in escrow and whoever wins the dispute gets it in the end. And I actually can't see in my analytics what happened during that entire period. It's like all grayed out. So I don't know how much money that video earned the entire time that EMI and Ultra Publishing were actually stealing from me. But it the amount doesn't matter. It's the principle that they're stealing not just for me, but from thousands and thousands of artists and performers who are doing legitimate legal things and expressing themselves. And big companies are coming by and taking pennies out of their pockets that they can be used to put food on their table, to put their children through school, to take care of their pets or whatever. Um, and it's it made me very, very angry that this is not only happening to me. I'm not the only one this has happened to. It's happening on a large scale. The thing is, I don't know what can be corrected. I do believe that the YouTube copyright system is messed up, but I don't think that's where the problem is here. I think the problem here is in the copyright law system in general and the lack of punishment for copy fraud, which this basically was. This behavior, this going by and dinging videos is not disincentivized by anyone. There's no repercussions for doing this. I probably could sue them for some kind of damages uh, or whatever, but I'm not gonna do that because that requires my money and time. I do think that there are some ser pretty serious like repercussions, legal repercussions. I think that there's like some misrepresentation maybe that happens. Um, with this, but those punishments are never, I never see those punishments for these companies. And that's where I have the frustration. So I just wanna to say to every creator out there that if you get a rejected dispute, to be brave, <laughs> to stand up to these companies that are strong arming you, go ahead and file that, file that appeal. I, it does get a little bit murky when it's an appeal with like another creator. I feel like that's something totally different. That can information I think they use to like extort people and blackmail them. This is different though. I'm not afraid to give my information to UMG or Sony or EMI. Come at me. <laughs> I feel like if more creators just press the appeal button, um, they would be less incentivized to do this. And maybe, I, I just don't, I don't know what we can do to make this better, but it's, anyway, that's what I went through. Uh, I won the thing. I just wanted to give you an update and talk about it. And uh, that's my rant. I hope you have a great day and uh, I'll see you next time.